Hello everyone. If you're watching this video on December 25th, 2022, then I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Now I know the content of what I'm about to show you concerning the Shroud of Turin might seem more like an Easter topic, but I found the update on the science behind the Shroud to be a powerful sign that faith and science are in no way contradictory. In fact, according to the lecture on this video, the scientific scholar Father Robert Spitzer, it may very well be that science might just force the Catholic Church to accept the authenticity of the Shroud. Now, if you're not familiar with the Shroud of Turin, it's believed to be the burial cloth of Christ that bears a perfect three-dimensional image of Christ's body at the moment of his resurrection. In this clip from a much longer lecture concerning a scientific update regarding science and God, which I'll link to below, Father Spitzer debunks an old carbon dating test on the Shroud, which was long held as a supposed proof of the Shroud's inauthenticity. He also goes on to give us an update on the two leading theories that could explain both the three-dimensional image we see and just how a linen cloth could survive for 2,000 years in such good shape. As science nears proof of a miracle that points to the divinity of Christ, let us rejoice in this Christmas season as we celebrate his birth. Merry Christmas, and God bless. Let's go to the Shroud of Turin now. This is the Jesus Studies area. <clears throat> I just want to give you three updates. There are many, many good things about the Shroud of Turin. I could give you another lecture on that. I did one, I think, in 2016 or something or whenever I did it. But anyway, uh, the Shroud of Turin is very fascinating. Of course, I do believe it is the burial cloth of Jesus Christ, and I believe in it for um, um, uh, scientific reasons. I mean, I, I, the church has not declared it to be an authentic relic, so I'm not believing it, of course, as a matter of faith, and I don't think anybody should believe it as a matter uh, of faith. And I just have uh, enough scientific evidence that I have a certitude that this is uh, the burial cloth of Jesus. But here's just three new little events. All of you, of course, remember the 1988 carbon dating uh, that occurred uh, on the Shroud of Turin a while back. And of course, it said that the Shroud was uh, produced in between 1262 and 1350 or something like that. Everybody thought, oh, medieval forgery, forget all, all about this thing. Initially, that was challenged by Dr. Ray Rogers, who came and said, yeah, I don't think that's right. The strands actually that were used uh, for the test on the Shroud of Turin, those strands for the sample, for the carbon dating samples, had cotton fibers in them. Well, the shroud's a linen fabric. There are no cotton fibers in them. And these cotton fibers had a gum dye mordant that wasn't even available in the world until after 12th century uh, Europe introduced that particular color and that particular kind of um, mordant. And so, of course, uh, you look at this and you go, aha, maybe Rogers is right. By the way, Rogers is no slouch, right? He was head of uh, thermochemistry for Los Alamos laboratories. And, and and, uh, the editor of Thermochemica, the peer-reviewed uh, medical journal of thermochemistry. So he's a pretty smart guy, but everybody said, eh, you got to hold off on this. You know, uh, this 1988 carbon dating is going to be pretty good still, you know, but uh, Ray Rogers uh, did put a real chink in it. And um, then uh, we just found out um, uh, a few, a couple of months ago that, um, uh, you know, uh, Tristan Casabianca and his team actually came out and uh, published in the peer peer-reviewed uh, journal, um, uh, um, uh, Archaeometry, uh, he showed that, um, that this test could not have been valid at all for dating uh, the, 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 uh, the shroud uh, in the 13th century. And uh, the reason, very simply, by the way, Tristan Casabianca for 30 years tried to pry the raw data from the carbon dating out of the British Museum, who had obtained custody over it, tried to pry it out of their grip. Finally, on a freedom of information request, he finally got it in 2018. He did the statistical analysis of the raw data. There's so much stratification and variegation, not only among the samples, but within the samples themselves. Casabianca said, there's no way this can possibly accurately date the Shroud to the Middle Ages. And furthermore, there's got to be some explanation for the, the, the stratification, the variegation in the, in, the, in the samples. There's got to be another cloth like those cotton fibers that Ray Rogers found. There's got to be some other cloth fibers woven into these fibers. So, 
Oh, okay. So um, let me just uh, cut to the uh, chase. So um, uh, we then after that, it, it kind of opened everything up. Giulio Fonti, just a real genius in the whole area of, of dating, uh, did three different non-carbon uh, datings um, of the shroud. Uh, the first thing that uh, he did was a, a Fourier transformed infrared spectroscopy, a Raman laser spectroscopy, and a mechanical compressibility and tension test. Average age from all three tests with all of the, um, you know, possibilities for um, uh, discontinuity um, uh, accounted for was about 90 AD with about a 95% confidence level. But then came this year, 2022, and this uh, fellow, uh, Liberato Di Caro, and, uh, you know, this is a whole group of people over at the, uh, the equivalent of Los Alamos, right? The equivalent of the National Laboratories of Italy. This whole group uh, under Liberato Di Caro did a brand new uh, kind of dating, and what's called an X-ray, um, a wide-angle X-ray scattering dating. And uh, they peer-reviewed, uh, they did a peer-reviewed um, series of tests uh, on this uh, for two and a half years before actually doing the dating on the shroud material. Finally, of course, when that was accepted, they went ahead and did the shroud test. What did they date the shroud to be? Between 55 to 74 AD. Whoa! right at the time of Jesus, commensurate with Giulio Fonti's uh, dating. I'm not kidding you. Uh, this is just really remarkable. And they totally disproved and discredited the 1988 carbon dating because this kind of um, uh, X-ray scattering um, uh, dating test basically allows you to know what the secular temperature uh, of um, a material has been throughout the course of its existence. Well, if you're going to make um, the shroud to be 700 years old, the Secular temperature every day of its existence would have had to have been 134 degrees. Like burning hot every single day, like in an oven. Ridiculous. That carbon dating is wrong. It's very likely that the date of the shroud is between 55 to 74, give or take whatever it is, 50 years. So let's now go to something really interesting as well. And I'm just, in the last few minutes, I just want to tell you about the particle radiation hypothesis. The party, uh, right now, we know for a fact there's only one way of producing that image on the shroud because of its peculiarities. Radiation. It's the only way. Now, there's two kinds of radiation that could do it. One has been postulated by John Jackson and um, uh, uh, by um, uh, Paolo Di Lasaro, and uh, they, their team actually did uh, uh, an, an, um, a test on what was called uh, columnated ultraviolet vacuum uh, radiation. And what it would have taken to produce that image in that way, which you would have gotten very, very precise three-dimensional imaging from it, it would be um, uh, six to eight billion, with a B, billion watts of light energy for one forty billionth of a second. That's the requirement. A half a million searchlights worth of light energy uh, to give rise to that image for one forty billionth of a second. Dead bodies do not normally do this. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, what, was, what is also required is that the body becomes spiritual. The body becomes mechanically transparent so that the sh th shroud can actually penetrate at least three sixteenths of an inch into the body so that you can get uh, the um, layering, the depth layering from an MRA-like approach, right? Uh, the depth layering of the bones inside the hand, the bone in the backbone compared to the skin on the surface, all that depth layering on the inside as well as the outside from the skin to the shroud itself is all recorded perfectly on the shroud. So the body's got to become spiritual. Dead bodies generally don't do that either. Now I'm going to cut to the chase. There's one other radiation hypothesis that explains every single enigma on the shroud, and that's called the particle radiation hypothesis. Uh, I don't have enough time to explain it right now, but particle radiation hypothesis comes from what's called a low temperature nuclear disintegration. So every stable atomic nucleus in that body 
is going to simultaneously start disintegrating in a low temperature nuclear reaction. And so the body is literally disappearing away. And as the body disappears uh, away, of course, as it's disappearing, it's going to give rise to one major neutron flux, proton alpha particle flux, right? You're going to get all this shower of particles just, just blasting out of this body and a big white light. And by the way, a big boom. And of course, when all of this happens, uh, you can actually get not only the image there, but you can explain a bunch of other things on the shroud that are hitherto unexplained. First of all, you don't even have to worry about how the body became spiritually transparent if the body disintegrated, literally in a nuclear uh, reaction. But what's even more important is you can explain how the blood stains have perfect integrity on the shroud. How could the, the, the shroud be lying on that body for a day and a half at least, and then somebody come along after all the blood is coagulated between the body and the shroud and rip that uh, shroud right off? You'd have so so many disfigurements of those blood stains, et cetera, et cetera. Not a one is there on that shroud. That, that, the blood on the shroud is in incredibly good condition. Number two, the actual color of the blood, right? Most blood as it gets older becomes brownish, blackish. The, the blood on the shroud is bright red. Uh, all you need is a neutron flux to explain that baby. And of course, the, the same thing, uh, right, if you start going the tremendous longevity of the cloth. I mean, this cloth has lasted. It has, it's like resistant to solvents. It's resistant to everything. You know, you look at it and you go, how is this possible? And I'll just come to the chase, you know, right now that uh, uh, you get a neutron flux uh, going and that those neutrons are going to break the uh, carbonyl bonds inside uh, the, the cloth and, and when they break it, they're going to reinforce in much more structured, better uh, carbonyl bonds um, that are in chains uh, that are much stronger and that's the explanation. I'll just quickly go to the uh, final thought. I mean, when you look at this, we have now a test where we can prove this. All we need to do is get at that shroud uh, the next time the scientific test goes uh, forward. Because if there was a real nuclear reaction, a low temperature nuclear disintegration, by the way, this is a real miracle. Bodies simul do not go through a complete nuclear disintegration simultaneously after death and leave big, huge light and booms. They just don't do this. So of course, the main thing to recognize is we got a test now. And that test is cosmogenic is isotopes. And so if you, we start finding an abundance of chlorine 36 and calcium 41 that are only produced in nuclear reactions and they're there in abundance on this shroud. You had a nuclear reaction there. Particle radiation's the explanation. If particle radiation's ex the explanation, it's a miracle. If ultraviolet radiation's the explanation, it's a miracle. In other words, we're getting to the point now where we can see not only Jesus Christ and the truth of him in his words and in his spirit and in his church, we can see Jesus Christ now through the lens of science, risen in glory, risen in light, risen, as it were, master of the nuclear power of the universe, risen as God would have us discover it 2,000 years later in a skeptical scientific generation so he could just go, gotcha. Thank you so much, everybody.